Hey there, my friends, what is going on, everybody? Vitaly Dubin is here, founder of Bitcoin's Wall Club, and welcome to another episode of Today in Crypto Show, where I'm discussing the latest and the greatest news in the world of Bitcoin cryptocurrency. Happy Sunday, the start of a new week, and we are continuing for Bitcoin to struggle to rebound after this $2,000 downward movement from $12,000 to $10,000. We're holding for many days now the 10 to 10 and a half thousand dollar level and want to discuss the bitcoin price in the immediate short term as well as the longer term i want to talk about DeFi space and the ethereum and what's in for ethereum this year and in the coming years very important to watch the ethereum blockchain as well so let's get started guys we are having a 346 billion dollar market cap right now and uh, the biggest Winner for the week is Wi-Fi. The earn that finance continuing to uh, rock and uh, surprise everybody. It's currently priced at thirty-seven thousand four hundred dollars. And one of those coins that is the cornerstone right now in the DeFi space, decentralized finance space. Um, even though it's been down in the last twenty-four hours, a little small correction of seven percent. Uh, we see OKB uh, 13%, Kusama 11%, Balancer 11%, Binance Coin. Overall, mostly the markets are in the red, in the top 100. Bitcoin is currently trading at uh, uh, $10,351, Ethereum 374 dollars. Um, we're seeing uh, some red movements right now with the recent um the last one hour bitcoin ethereum fell by the 1.5 percent bitcoin right now is balancing on the weekly 21 week moving averages there's very important moving average right here and we balance perfectly from here right now um and uh, uh, holding holding above this downtrend trend line that we uh, have been since December 2017. We broke it in July this year and now we had a little correction and this is where it really re resembles the late 2016 the the way that the Bitcoin market was in late 2016 we are not going to expect to see Bitcoin prices jump by 200% 4% just like that <laughs> it's going to be more of a movement up and then correction movement up and then correction consolidation it's going to be uh, slower in the beginning okay so uh do not anticipate bitcoin all of a sudden reach all-time high twenty thousand thirty thousand dollars in the immediate short term we're going to have those corrections and 10 20 30 percent corrections is what we've seen in 2016 and that's what we are going to see as well in this current market so we did have this correction right here since twelve thousand dollars we couldn't break this level so we corrected about 18 percent uh from that point which is totally fine for uh, bitcoin in the overall uh uptrend movement okay so we are still in an uptrend movement we have not breaking this level if we are going to break this level um then we might retest the nine thousand dollar level again okay but the chance of that ha happening is less than 50 percent there's more chance that we are going to uh, hold this level and uh correct and, and continue our um, upward movement we're seeing morgan stanley strategies recommend to buy bitcoin as central banks are ramping up with their money printing there is new waves of coronavirus and uh, the government's response is to continue with the stimulus aid and to continue to printing money and to help the companies individuals and corporations and uh, essentially um, he says that alternative assets like gold and cryptocurrency could keep doing well while the stocks struggle and you know the stock market even though it has been rising it is uh, uh, really a little bit uh, overpriced and artificial because the economy overall is is very weak we have huge number of unemployment around the world and uh essentially because, because the economy is weak and the money printing is going on that's what kept the stock prices high but we might see a big correction in the stock market and because bitcoin is uh highly correlated to the stock market still okay if the stock market is going to crack down we may see bitcoin go down but only temporarily as we have a lot of orders um, 
actually the 10,000 or level holding this level of support and buying a lot of Bitcoin in this level. But if Bitcoin will fall to the 9,000 or level, there's going to be a lot of support in this area um, to get the price back up higher. If you're looking to get into Bitcoin, okay, now is a good time. You can never, you know, really catch the biggest dip in the market. I mean, if you were lucky enough to get into this Corona dump right here into Bitcoin, then uh, awesome, you know, after you see such big movements downwards, this is the time to buy, this is the time to get in, okay? But the question is, are we going to see Bitcoin down from here? Nobody knows, nobody knows for sure, uh, obviously, and uh, you, may, you may not find the, this bottom. It's very hard to find the bottom <laughs> in the next cycle. So just dollar cost averaging to get into Bitcoin, um, so uh, that's what he's saying. Generally, I think what's, what's telling you is that there is a lingering feeling out there that given what central banks are doing in terms of printing so much money, there is a search for alternative assets like Bitcoin cryptocurrency. Duh, you know, uh, because of that money printing, definitely inflation is going to happen, the devaluation of the fiat currencies, and um, it just makes more case for Bitcoin. We see the Bitcoin whales cluster around $10,570. This is where, and, and also $11,288. This is a measure that essentially uh, measures how the, the Bitcoin, uh, a lot of Bitcoin accumulate and not uh, really moving from the wallets, from the whales, large whales. And those are the next two levels to really um, take a look at and essentially if we're not going to break this level, then we might, you know, the, the, you know, the, we can sell at those levels, 10,500, 11,800, this is where they're profitable, those whale wallets. And in case Bitcoin dips, Coinbase is some fat orders below. Coinbase added bids from 10,000 to 100 to 10,000. There are 2,500 Bitcoin in bids right now. So looking at the crucial levels, can we go to $16,000? Um, obviously we can, but we need to first break and consolidate through the $11,800 level and just uh, break through this level. Right? That's an important level of $12,000. The entire market cap is showing a healthy correction in an upward trending market. So we are in an upward trending market. That's what you need to understand and remember. But uh, for crypto, but healthy corrections, healthy correction is is uh, is really something we should expect. Um, the current market is not as 2017 right now; it's more of 2016. Okay, so we still have a lot of room to grow. Now, talking about DeFi, decentralized finance space, uh, according to Pantera Capital CEO Dan Moorhead, um, he said the DeFi space will outperform Bitcoin in the next five years, and it definitely has a huge, huge potential, a much bigger market than. Um, than uh, Bitcoin, okay? Uh, it might could go to a million, but that's really the edge of possibility because you're getting to a number that's $20 trillion in all money on earth is only 100 trillion, okay? On the other hand, DeFi is still in its infancy and largely undervalued considering its potential to disrupt the traditional financial sector, hence its huge potential for appreciation. It's much more likely that the entire DeFi space goes up 100x over the next five years than Bitcoin, he said. And yes, the DeFi space is definitely, definitely uh, uh, growing. Um, now let's talk about Ethereum. Ethereum and the rise of the DeFi because of Ethereum blockchain and uh, the rise in the fees that skyrocketed. Let's talk about Ethereum. Ethereum 2.0 is coming that is uh, um, actually going to be very, very, very good for Ethereum. And the prices of Ethereum is very very likely to skyrocket before and during the integration there's going to be a couple phases though several phases to transition into ethereum 2.0 with scalability with lowering the fees okay so the phase zero is the first to be expected release on the ethereum 2.0 roadmap scheduled to launch this year this year okay and Ethereum 2.0 is coming. We are now in the middle of what we believe to be the final testnet. We had many smooth operations on the testnet and on a lot of Ethereum 2.0 client, clients built by different teams. And Ethereum 1.0 isn't ever going to go away. They're just building on top of that and transitioning from proof of mining to proof of staking consensus mechanism. Okay, 
uh, Ethereum 2.0 will reach back into Ethereum 1.0 and finalize blocks there, enabling greater security and production of issues of blocks on Ethereum 1.0. Um, and he said Ethereum 2.0 will be the biggest, most sophisticated DeFi application on Ethereum 1.0. And uh, later on, later on, the third phase of Ethereum 2.0 will take place in late 2021 or something in 2022. And once this occurs, organization will then have the ability to smoothly onboard clients for Ethereum. So still a, a good, healthy couple of years for Ethereum uh, with anticipation with Ethereum 2.0 to climb in the, on the weekly, you know, to climb on the weekly and monthly in the coming year and a half, two years uh, with the introduction of the phases with Ethereum 2.0. Okay, so again, end of this year, Ethereum 2.0, the first phase is coming, proof of stake chain. Ether can be staked and substantial rewards earned for running validators on the network. I'm definitely planning to stake my Ethereum. Any institution that has custody of significant amount of Ether may wish to participate in staking. Okay, um, and again, let's talk about the gas fees. So the gas fees are still high and this is because of the DeFi space. The DeFi space is boom, uh, boomed a lot. If we go to DeFi pools, uh, it's growing from a billion dollars in the beginning of June to where it is right now, which is much bigger. It's $8.29 billion um, market for uh, DeFi space. The lending protocols reward li liquidity providers this very facet of the technology has resulted in the creation of an undesirable environment of high transaction fees that in turn has greatly affected the value of many tokens. Um, so really what to do about um, this rising fees on the Ethereum blockchain because of this uh, Uniswap, SushiSwap, you know, all of this, <laughs> all of this uh, decentralized exchanges that uh, trade tokens for Ethereum back and forth um like uh, this platform uniswap that uh, you know half a billion dollars a day in in uh, essentially in uh, trading fees i don't know what's going on right now about this site it's not loading for some reason <laughs> um there is a ethereum proven protocol that essentially will try to minimize uh, those fees however you know uh, that being said, most experts are fairly certain that the recent circumstances will not result in any major change in Ethereum mainstream viability, even though the platform's public perception has definitely been tested with the current gas price problem, especially since for most people the argument for crypto has traditionally been that it costs next to nothing to process trans uh, transfers when compared with traditional avenues such as PayPal and Swift, right? And now the transaction fees are, are much higher. However, uh, uh, people are waking up now that uh, we are not just using Ethereum for money. We have a lot of other things beyond payments and money transfers that are being used on the Ethereum blockchain, like tokenizations and mortgages and whatnot. Um, so the fees are going to go lower, but it will not happen soon. <laughs> it will not happen soon. Um, it will take some time. Uh, for that to happen, you know, uh, still the miners have earned, you know, five hundred thousand uh, dollars in like one hour, half a million dollars in one hour because of the spike in fees. That was uh, back in the first of September. Now the fees uh, are lower than they were in the first of September when Ethereum reached four hundred eighty-six dollar local high. Uh, however, the fees are still very high. That's why the smart contracts are a lot of them are moving into. Um, that are moving into, um, you know, <coughs> they are moving into uh, um, the Tron network. The Tron network. We have the seven hundred million dollar wallet crack, and the Bitcoin seven largest in the Bitcoin richest wallet address. They still can, are not able to hack, no matter how many attempts. Is how strong the Bitcoin network is. Uh, many hackers are trying to break through the passwords on this wallet containing 69,000 Bitcoin to no avail so far. Um, and uh, the volatility, the volatility is, is very, very high on the bit on the Ethereum. It's like even more higher than on that on the Bitcoin. You can see that back and forth, back and forth. And you can trade. Uh, I'm using the 
a Bybit for trading and you can trade uh, when Bitcoin is up, when Ethereum is up or down and uh, generate profits this way. And um, we launched uh, on the Forsage. Forsage is launched now, you know, uh, apart from the Ethereum uh, smart contract, the number one DAP in the space. They also launched the Tron one uh, just uh, a week ago, and it's been gaining a very, very big popularity. Right now, 68,000 participants in the last week that join, earning collectively 321 million Tron. Um, so uh, to learn more about how this works, you can go to watch.earntrxdailysystem.com and learn more about how this works. I have a close contact with the founders and they're about to release the debit cards uh, soon as well. And a lot of a lot of cool features and cool stuff is coming into this blockchain. So um, with that being said, guys, I hope you have a fantastic day, a fantastic week, and we are going to see you very, very soon.